So this is the mix and you're watching Loop TV. Okay, so um, we've got a basic beat rolling round. I'm um, going to go on to a bass line now. Uh, I've loaded up Trilogy, um, just a simple sine wave, which is always good for sub. Um, the thing is with a sine wave, it doesn't really have any kind of punch at the start, so it's very hard to do short notes. So what I'm going to try and do is um, use the pitch envelope on, tri on Trilogy to give it like a, a bit of a punchier start. Near it, kind of just a little bit of pitch at the start. If I move the time higher, you get those falling kind of bass lines. Two keys, get the whole kind of sound. So I'm going to just go for a simple punchy one, though. to use the second oscillator B um, to create like a harmonic like an octave up so it's a bit more audio audible on um, smaller systems just a little bit of that yeah and I just put a little pat pattern down here um, bounce that down and have two layers one that's very clean just for the sub and another one might just add a little bit of distortion so we'll call that sign so I've bounced the bass down to audio just a simple bass loop I'm gonna just add um, like an amp modeler I really like amplitude um, this, the, the presets are pretty cool on it just kind of can just go through and pick one of those really, just see how it sounds. Kind of looking for something that would give an overtone to the sub noise. I do like the chorusy one. I mean that's quite extreme, so we like turn that one down a bit. Looking for something just to give it a bit of subtle distortion. See how that runs with it on top of the original. That's not bad. So just like I, I don't tend to use too much distortion, but it's just so that you know anyone playing your tune on a laptop, they can get some sense of sub rather than um, none at all. If there's too much buzziness, I'll just roll off a bit more of the top. As you can see on the analyzer here, there's quite a, um, quite a bit of mid still there, so I might just roll that off. I also sometimes like using um, the Emu sampler um, every now and then. I mean, it's so easy to produce the basses and software and it's more convenient, really. Um, but the Emu Ultra does have a wicked sound um, to basses, especially if you sort of use the uh, Peak More filter. So now we've got the, um, the two layers of uh, the sub. We've got the real pure sine kind of pitched tone, slightly distorted one from audio. It's just giving that kind of mid tone to it and then um, just from Edirol orchestral which I really like using um, I've added just kind of like a real subtle musical um, kind of bass over the top which really just adds a bit of warmth and musicality to the bass line so if I solo it it's very simple it's kind of like a very low down flute 
adds a bit of stereo image to the sound. Uh, but if I play that with the groove, just adds a bit of warmth um, and kind of like a more interesting tone um, to the bass. Whereas a lot of people would add, add many layers of bass, you know, bass LFOs, envelopes, you know, distortion. I kind of tend to do it with music and then, you know, this kind of sound might trigger the start of me, you know, playing other chords or whatever over the top of the music. So it's kind of like a good starting point to, to layer your music from that point there.